Okay, uh, thank you everybody for joining us uh, at this uh, great uh, event to discuss what important steps we need to take uh, in ensuring that the African Medicines Agency is uh, reality and what great improvements Africa has made during this period uh, to ensure we cope with uh, COVID. Uh, firstly, uh, good morning, good afternoon and good evening to everybody who listening to us and watching us. I am Carl Devsemi. I'm the CEO of the International Alliance of uh, Patients Organizations. And together with our partners, the IFPMA, we are hosting this in a joint uh, IFPMA IAPO uh, webinar. I need to set some ground rules first. Uh, please use the chat function for your questions. And please uh, keep your chat to that which is necessary and required. Uh, we do not want to see any defamatory comments or uh, any chit chat that's not um, adding value to our discussion here. Uh, put there so we can scan those chats and we can then bring them back into our questions to the panelists. Secondly, uh, please uh, uh, unmute, uh, mute yourself when you're not speaking as Catherine has put, and also ensure that uh, you follow the decorum and make sure you keep it to your time when you discuss and we will then open the meeting up. It's my great pleasure first to introduce our moderator. Uh, Catherine, um, uh, uh, whom you have heard a number of times elsewhere, uh, has been a very good journalist uh, credited by the United Nations. Uh, she has worked extensively to on African issues she has worked uh, some of the very tough issues on health. Uh, she's worked some of the tough issues on social economic uh, issues of health. Currently, she's based in Geneva, the heart of where all the permanent missions to the UN are based. And she has really the pulse on what is happening in Africa right now, how the 55 states are going through this pandemic at the moment. And I now have that great pleasure to hand over to her capable hands and uh, let's see how this evening's uh, whole event uh, transpires. Catherine Fekanga or Congo, it's yours now, thank you. Thank you th so much uh, Kawaldeep for these very nice uh, words. Uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, we are very happy um, to have so many of you today with us. As Kawal Deep said, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. As you know, today we'll focus on um, the African Medicines Agency. So I kindly remind um, all the, the viewers that it is a proposed, a spe a specialized um, African Union Agency um, uh, that would like to facilitate and uh, the harmonization of uh, medical regulation throughout the African uh, Union. I, I remind you that the treaty was um, established um, and a tab, uh, um, I'm sorry, I would like to remind you that the treaty was adopted uh, by the African Union in February 2019 and it requires 15 uh, ratifications to come into effect. As per today, we have 18 countries that signed the treaty, but only six countries uh, did ratify it. And these six countries are Mali, Burkina Faso, Rwanda, Guinea, the Seychelles Islands and Ghana. And we are very fortunate to have uh, among the high level uh, panelists, um, a representative of Ghana. So um, now I will uh, directly um, propose you to um, watch a very uh, short um, video uh, that um, has been uh, prepared by AUDA NEPAD uh, on the African Medicine Agency. So please, we'll see, we'll look at that now. Everyone has the right to effective healthcare and a well-functioning health system. 
Africa has made great strides in accelerating the major challenge of increasing access to medicines through various public health interventions. However, about half of the population in the poorest places still do not have access to safe, efficacious and quality medical products. Local pharmaceutical production remains low, with only about 2% of consumed medicines being locally manufactured in Africa. About 25 to 30% of medical products are substandard and falsified, and illicit trade in pharmaceutical drugs remains persistent. This poses a series of threats to public health. Now, more than ever, it's time for change that will ensure African people have quality of life, sound health, and well-being, a priority area in the African Union Agenda 2063. The African Medicines Agency, or AMA Treaty, was endorsed in February 2019 by African heads of state. As part of the journey towards an internationally recognized and well-established regulatory authority on the continent. As an organ of the African Union, legally mandated by member states, AMA's goal is to increase the availability of safe and affordable medicines and other health products on the continent. This will be achieved through providing regulatory oversight of selected medical products as well as promoting regional and national cooperation and harmonization of regulatory decisions. AMA will also support the growth of local pharmaceutical companies opening up and expanding markets across Africa, which is one of the key objectives of the Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Plan for Africa and the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Working across 55 AU member states, regional economic communities and regional health organizations, the African Medicines Agency will coordinate and strengthen ongoing regulatory harmonization in the following ways. Firstly, AMA will evaluate medical products for the treatment of priority diseases as determined by the African Union. It will also regularly inspect, coordinate and share information about products that are authorized for marketing. AMA will coordinate joint reviews of clinical trials applications for vaccines, assessment of highly complex product dossiers such as biosimilars. AMA will also coordinate joint inspections of active pharmaceutical ingredients, API manufacturing sites. By developing common standards and regulations, AMA will also be responsible for harmonizing legislation. For the health and well-being of our people, let us take this further by establishing the African Medicines Agency. AMA must be ratified by at least 15 member states in order for it to come into force. We call on all African governments to ratify the AMA Treaty and endorse the transformation of our continent's pharmaceutical industry and health systems. With this support, the establishment of AMA will reach fruition. Contact the African Union for more information. So this was a very short but interesting video uh, to introduce AMA. Uh, the African um, Medicines Agency. And um, for um, today, we have um, about um, five panelists that will um, discuss the matter, the, the issue with us today. So I will start by introducing you um, Elos Lodzeni. Elos Lodzeni from IAPO, the Inter-Alliance of Patients Organization. Elos, uh, welcome. Could you just make a sign? Yes, there we see you. Then we have um, from Auda Nepad, Paul Tanui. Paul Tanui. Uh, Paul, can you also, yes, yeah, so like that, all the viewers, the participants see you. Paul is based in South Africa, Paul um, from Auda Nepad. Then we have Mimi Darko uh, from Ghana. FDA, Mimi, hello, welcome. 
and we have uh, Hiti Silo from um, WHO. Uh, Hiti, good morning. Nice having you with us. Um, we have uh, Karim uh, Bendau Hello. from IFPMA. Um, he is the African uh, Chair of uh, Africa Bureau at IFPMA, but also Head of Merck Africa Bureau. Hello. And um, I think um, I have everyone. Uh, I did mention everyone. So we'll start now um, by directly asking a, a first question. We are in a situation of a pandemic, um, COVID-19, as you know. Until now, um, few countries have ratified the treaty. Uh, as I mentioned it before, and I've, you've seen it um, during that short video, only six countries did ratify the treaty when 15 ratifications are needed. So my first question will be, um, is the COVID-19 going to boost the ratification and the signature of, of uh, that um, AMA uh, treaty? So um, I will maybe first uh, ask um, the question um, to um, Elos. Uh, what do you think about it? Yes, COVID-19 is going to have an impact on the signing and ratification of uh, the AMA. Uh, we need the vaccines, medicines, as if it was yesterday. So with this, for us to get uh, medicine in a speedy manner, we need this harmonized way through the AMA. So what's required is that the member states, they need to undertake the signing in a fast manner. Otherwise, we will not be able to get uh, the vaccine in a speedy manner, thereby putting our population at a greater risk in as far as COVID is concerned. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to, to react um, on that? Maybe um, uh, Paul uh, Tanui from uh, AUDA, NEPAD, Paul, do you think that, um, or do you feel already um, more interest uh, for the countries? Because you need also a political will uh, in order to uh, sign and also to ratify. Because I remember that 18 countries did sign uh, the treaty, but only six did ratify it. Paul Tanui. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, uh, uh, IAPO and IFPMA for organizing this uh, panel session. Um, yes, indeed, uh, the, there is need for accelerated um, uh, signing and ratification of the AMA Treaty. And uh, we have seen that uh, the, 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 the advent of uh, COVID-19, uh, as much as it is a, a, a sad situation and it is um, an emergency, it's a pandemic, but it has had some positive impact in that it is um, uh, it will push uh, the ratification process. Uh, there is also the realization that there is a need for strong regulatory systems among uh, countries uh, to be able to contain uh, public health emergencies, particularly those related uh, to supply chain uh, disruptions. Um, and so we, we need uh, these ratifications to be speeded. You have uh, rightly mentioned that we, we still are short of uh, 12 member, member states to ratify, uh, rather um, nine member states to ratify uh, this uh, treaty. Uh, but then uh, again, uh, uh, we want to ensure that we have uh, one continental agency that uh, can issue uh, rapidly uh, scientific recommendations for member states to take on. However, I should also mention that um, due to COVID-19, there has been some uh, challenges because now the focus is on COVID-19. 
Uh, so uh, in terms of the limitations, in terms of the advocacy and interactions, there's been some uh, drawback because, you know, uh, the parliaments have not been able to convene where there's parliamentary, uh, you know, uh, approval required by countries. So there's been some limitations as far as that is concerned. But uh, we are working together with other partners, African Union Commission, WHO, of course, uh, PATH, uh, REX, uh, IFPMA, and uh, civil society to ensure that uh, we put this in the agenda of the political uh, and uh, policy makers uh, across Africa and using all the platforms that are available to ensure that we advocate uh, and we have a focused advocacy for AMA treaty ratifications, uh, signing and uh, eventual ratification by countries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, um, Paul, uh, for, for this um, explanation. Um, I, I turn now to, um, to Mimi Darko, um, that is from Ghana, FDA. Mimi, um, Ghana did uh, sign and ratify uh, the treaty. Maybe you could share a bit of, of this experience. Um, how did um, the government the, uh, from Ghana decided to, to go quickly into that? Uh, thank you very much. Um, the whole process, uh, because it involves um, different le uh, legal systems, so uh, the ratification and even the signing does not just involve the agency, so it involves parliament, it involves the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it involves your parent ministry, so we fall under the Ministry of Health. And um, it also involves the Attorney General's Department because there's um, a lot of legal and financial implications. So for us, um, what actually moved it very quickly was that we had uh, leadership by a parent ministry. So we had very great leadership from our Ministry of Health. Um, there was a, a, a focal person nominated from the ministry because if you leave it just with the ministry, it never gets done. So the ministry nominated a focal person who was working with the regulatory agency and working with um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So basically it was teamwork between asset regulators, um, the Ministry of Health, um, Attorney General's Department, because they had to look through the treaty and ensure that we were okay to sign something like this. And um, the Ministry of Finance even came in because, well, if there are any financial implications to the agency, then the ministry would want to know. So basically it was teamwork. And I think that moved the process up very quickly. Um, we were all very committed. We had to first brief Parliament. And if you don't get advocacy for this, it gets stuck there. So we had to, with the Ministry, brief the um, Parliamentary Select Committee on Health, tell them the benefits. So we asked a lot of questions. What happens to the regulatory agency? What happens to the independence of the agency? Which was something that was very critical in the minds of all the legislation. Um, does that mean that the regulatory agency does not exist anymore? Will it affect the decisions that you take as a country? So we had to do a lot of advocacy and um, involve all the stakeholders. And there was political will, so eventually we got it signed. And um, we had to defend it in Parliament to get it ratified. So we, we managed to do that. But the support, the teamwork, and the collaboration was very key in getting it done. Um, no single agency or no single um, stakeholder can do it by themselves. So teamwork was very important. So we've done the ratification, we've told them the importance of it, the benefits of it, and brought everyone on board. So we're left to now deposit it. Apparently it is logged in that we have ratified, but once we have not deposited, then that means we're still not finished the process. So COVID came in and um, a lot of things were put on hold, but I'm sure we'll deposit very soon. So that was Ghana's experience. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you so much, um, Mimi, for, for, for sharing this experience, uh, uh, because we better understand uh, through what um, a country has to go um, in order to, to obtain the, the ratification of, of the treaty. And that, as I said uh, at the beginning of, of this uh, uh, meeting, uh, that a very strong political will is, is uh, necessary. And as you mentioned, uh, a lot of advocacy is also needed and teamwork. Um, I'd like to, to ask now um, what the benefits of um, establishing um, the agency uh, would, uh, would be. So um, I turn now to, to, to Karim, uh, Dr. Karim uh, Bendahu uh, from um, 
IFPME and, and Merck Africa. So Karim, what is um, your views on that, your experience? Because um, you know very well Africa and you work uh, with the continent for many years. Thank you very much, Catherine. Good morning to all the attendees. And I think today uh, Africa needs strong institutions that can address the challenges of access to quality, safe, and efficacious medicinal products and technologies. Therefore, the establishment of the AMA is a very, very important step in the right direction. We've seen also during the COVID-19 how uh, FDA and EMA uh, uh, have changed the way they are processing, uh, you know, uh, uh, the dossiers for vaccines and the, uh, 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 the examination of this uh, dossier. And I think that uh, it's also the right time to uh, 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 accelerate the uh, AMA ratification to avoid uh, duplication, uh, also to provide the regulatory uh, guidance, scientific opinions in a very short time and a common framework. This alignment uh, of regulatory system, strengthening and harmonization efforts, uh, uh, it's key, I mean, uh, for uh, optimizing also pharmaceutical markets and sustainability in the supply. Supply is key. We've seen also during the COVID-19, uh, the shortage which, uh, which happened and uh, uh, I think uh, this can be resolved uh, if uh, we would have uh, AMA existing already. In my opinion, no single country has enough resources and capability to efficiently and effectively regulate the whole supply chain system alone in this uh, globalized world, I mean. Therefore, AMA will have a, a distinct position to leverage various regulatory uh, assets and capabilities to improve this access to safe uh, medicines. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Karim, uh, for sharing um, this um, very interesting uh, view. Um, now, I'd like to, to ask also uh, Paul. Um, Paul, what do you think about um, the benefits that would bring um, the, the establishment of such an agency that would get, bring, of course, uh, harmonization? Yeah, Th thank you very much, uh, uh, Catherine, for this question. I think um, there is enormous uh, benefit that uh, AMA will bring on the table. First of all, is uh, ensuring that there is increased access to safe, quality, and efficacious medicines. And this should be, um, uh, uh, the access should be timely. So the, the most important thing is that uh, the access should be timely. And uh, given that not all of, of our agencies, as mentioned earlier on by colleagues, that, um, that uh, most of the agencies are actually struggling in terms of the resources, uh, financial resources, uh, technical resources, there is shortage of expertise, and so, uh, the African Medicines Agency will bring value uh, to these countries in terms of um, uh, regulating some of the complex molecules that are being brought into the African continent. And also some of the products that are being brought in into the continent where some of the regulators actually do not have the legal framework or even the capacity to evaluate. I'll give you the example of uh, you know, uh, medical devices and diagnostics, for instance, and even in the in this uh, er, in this um, period, we have seen the challenges of uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, in vitro diagnostics that are used, or, or diagnostics uh, that are used uh, for 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 testing for uh, uh, COVID-19. The various challenges that African countries have with this regard. So there is enormous uh, benefit that will accrue from uh, uh, this continental body. And it will also uh, further entrench and institutionalize 
the regulatory harmonization that we have been pursuing uh, as a continent. Uh, and ultimately, of course, um, uh, ensure that uh, uh, the continent, uh, there is a continent, continent wide, there is a, uh, integration uh, following even uh, the, 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 you know, the signing and endorsement of the Africa free, continental free trade area. So there'll be uh, possibilities of, um, of uh, you know, uh, intra-Africa trade and even promotion of local production given the expansions of the market. So it will be a process, but ultimately uh, we'll be working with the member states to ensure that this is a reality and also uh, is going to be um, uh, Africa-owned institution uh, that is uh, very uh, uh, critical in uh, terms of uh, public health, you know, uh, intervention in, 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 in the continent. So this is uh, my reflection on your question, uh, Catherine. Th thank you, Paul. Over. Thank you so much, Paul. So um, I, I turn to, to Elos. Elos, uh, could, you, could you please uh, give you um, your, the perspective from patients? Uh, what, what will be the benefits for patients? Um, we don't see you anymore. We just lost you. Um, but Elos, do you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. So please, uh, what do you think that the benefits uh, will be uh, for patients? And we see you. We do see you. Uh, but we don't hear you. Could you please unmute yourself? I would say there are two, three benefits as patients. One, uh, Africa has been very much infected with the fake counterfeit medicines. Now with this harmonized one-stop shop for regulatory mechanisms, it means us as patients will be receiving We do have a small uh, connecting uh, problem. Uh, so I'll, I'll turn um, two minutes, we, we'll fix that. But uh, I will ask now, oh, Elos, you back? Yeah, when you are could sick. You, could you please repeat, repeat your last sentence? Thank you. When you are sick as a patient, you can't wait for yesterday. You need medicines now, now. So with this, uh, one-stop shop, it means medicines will be easily available in a very, very expeditious way. So as patients, we very much look forward to having this uh, armor in place as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ellis. Um, ET, WHO, what, what, what would be the benefit also from um, when you look from, from WHO, the World Health Organization, what would be the advantage for, to, to have such an agency based um, and, and focused on Africa? Yeah, thank you very much, Catherine, and also good morning, good afternoon, colleagues and, and this panel, and also all the participants. First of all, I would like to, to start by saying that <clears throat> the WHO has been committed and involved in the in the whole journey of establishing the African Medicines Agency all the way from the Luanda Declaration in 2014. And of course, all along in the process of uh, developing the treaty and also uh, supporting its, its, its ratification, its, I mean, its, its adoption by the, by the African Union. We see that AMA will be building on the work that has been happening across the African continent that is supported by the World Health Organization. Uh, 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 through regulatory harmonization in initiative that we have been supporting over the years and therefore uh, promoting efficiency in approving the products that are assessed, that have been properly assessed for quality and, and of course effectiveness and therefore ensuring that the people of Africa are accessing quality assured and safe medical products on time. So, so, so that is the, the background to, to, to our support and we believe that AMA will actually build on this experience uh, which we have been supporting through the regional economic communities, the work that has been done 
uh, over the over the last uh, decade, uh, uh, ten years now. Uh, last last year we were actually celebrating a decade of collaboration uh, 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 among the partners to support regulatory system strengthening and, and particularly harmonization among the African countries. So we see that with the establishment of AMA, uh, the work that has been ongoing over uh, on the continent will actually be uh, 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 taken forward by this African a single agency uh, by pulling the existing expertise, which is now only, for example, used within the regional economic communities. Now these resources can be pulled together at the, con at the continental level and therefore support and benefit countries that, that are actually weak. And speaking from my own experience as a, a team lead for a team in WHO that is involved with the assessment of regulatory systems on the, on, on, of course, at the global level, but also uh, in the African continent, we have seen the capacity gaps and therefore having this continental agency will help to pull together the limited resources that are available in some countries and not in others uh, to support the joint assessments, especially of complex products, but also uh, joint inspections and therefore supporting the rest of the, of the countries uh, uh, that are on the continent. We also see that, and I see some comments in the chat here, uh, that uh, we are, uh, African continent is, is also experiencing some challenges of substandard and falsified medical products. So uh, by, by, by having this agency, the agency will also be able to coordinate continental effort, efforts towards prevention, detection, and of course, response to substandard and falsified uh, medical products. And, and by, by doing this, they will be able to, to facilitate information sharing and therefore the necessary actions are taken on time. As we know, these products do move quickly between countries. And if there's an effective coordination at the continental level, then information can be shared quickly and, there, and the necessary actions can be actually taken. I can conclude by saying that at least at this point, uh, the African Medicines Agency will also coordinate capacity building activities uh, uh, in collaboration with other international partners, WHO leading this support, uh, linking the agency with other uh, mature and advanced agencies and to ensure that capacity is also continually uh, built on, on the continent by identifying the, the, the experts and also supporting uh, uh, them in terms of enhancing their capacity. So the African Medicine Agency will also be, I think, playing a critical role uh, in, 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 in this area. And very lastly, uh, uh, with a strong agency on the continent, you are also encouraging investment in production of quality assured uh, pharmaceutical products on the continent because the investors are sure that the products will be on a market that is of quality assured products and therefore this will in, uh, also contribute to enhancing local production of quality assured medical products on the African continent. Over from my side for the time being. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hiti, uh, for, for this no very complete answer uh, and detailed. Uh, but now that we've, we've understood that it is an, uh, an entity that is needed, an entity that is going to bring uh, a lot of benefits um, for Africa. How do you explain that since um, the establishment um, of, of uh, the treaty um, in 2019, uh, so few countries did sign it and did ratify it? We understood through um, Mimi that it has to go under a, a quite difficult process and that a, a very strong political will is needed and also communication a lot of advocacy is needed. So, uh, Paul, I, I turn to, to you first. Uh, do you have an explanation uh, about the fact that uh, only six countries did ratify uh, the treaty until now? Uh, thank you very much uh, for, this, uh, for this important question. I, I think, yes, it's now we're going into two years since the endorsement of the uh, Africa Medicines Agency Treaty uh, by the African leaders. Uh, uh, but, but we might ask ourselves, what is preventing the signing and ratification of the treaty uh, to establish the Africa Medicines Agency? So one is uh, the requirements for ratification. We should bear in mind that we are 55 member states. So the requirements vary significantly between countries. 
And time frames are also determined in part by whether the country has, a, has what the lawyers call monist or a dualist legal system. The, these are uh, uh, presidential uh, uh, or legislative legal systems. So the different legal uh, systems that are ap applicable for ratification of international treaties uh, amongst uh, the AU member states uh, vary significantly. Uh, some are uh, go through uh, the executive system, others go through legislative uh, systems. So w while uh, we have uh, the executive systems where presidential degree, decree is enough to get a treaty signed, uh, for the most part, again, uh, in most cases, again, uh, you need uh, in, 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 in another, in uh, the, the dualist system, you need uh, parliamentary approval. Uh, and I think uh, 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 Mimi from, uh, from uh, Ghana FD has also explained how they went through this system. And this need a lot of understanding and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, advocacy amongst the policymakers. One of the drawbacks in the current uh, situation, of course, is the prioritization of uh, COVID-19 response, which has also hampered uh, our progress in terms of uh, 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 ratification, signing and ratification of the treaty amongst member states, because I know a lot of resources and a lot of uh, energies have been channeled to responding to COVID-19. There is also a little bit um, uh, insufficient uh, political will, not for any reason, but due to little or lack of knowledge of the benefits and costs of the African Medicines Agency for the country. So the limited understanding of the value of AMA uh, that it brings to the member states uh, is, is an issue. Also, the countries would want to understand what are the costs, what are the implications and so on uh, by signing this treaty. The other issue that uh, uh, is, is of importance is that most countries have length, lengthy political processes and it also depends on the country ratification systems. And there are also gaps in information relating to the operationalization of the African Medicines Agency, uh, including funding, governance, and the selection process for the host, host country, so that the, we, we are trying to fill these gaps by, 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 by passing on information to uh, member states. Uh, there are also more, uh, more concerns, uh, concerns around uh, centralized approach to regulatory approvals, um, uh, uh, and also the, 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 the fact that some countries uh, are wondering whether establishment of uh, African Medicines Agency will replace their sovereign uh, authority over regulatory matters, which is, uh, which is, uh, which clearly is, is not the case. Uh, so this is uh, what I want to say. And, and again, th there is a political angle to this, which we, we need to take into account that we need to engage the political class, policymakers, the ministers, the various ministers, ministers for health, ministers for foreign affairs, minister uh, justice, ministers for justice or uh, attorney general's office. So it's quite a lengthy process. Then there is the technical process uh, to support uh, signatories uh, to ratify through their respective processes, including uh, deposition of, uh, of the legal instruments with the uh, AUC uh, legal council. So I, I see this as um, a long process that is uh, that I can consider as uh, ampering the signing and ratification of the of the treaty. Uh, thank you. Over to you, Catherine. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, that's the reason why I turn now to to Mimi because uh, she did explain explain us that uh, it it has been a teamwork, uh, and you explained us a, a little bit how, um, in fact, the different uh, ministries work together. Um, and uh, was it really difficult um, to convince? and um, the, the, the parliament uh, to convince uh, the political people about um, the interest of ratification and, and do you have also the uh, opportunity 
to advocate uh, with neighboring countries um, or during meetings uh, in order for the, the treaty um, to enter um, into force because uh, you, you need um, a little bit more countries, a uh, few more in order uh, for, for the treaty uh, uh, to enter into force and for the agency uh, to be established. Mimi, please, the floor is yours. Thank I you remember that Mimi, I remember that you are in Ghana and that you're from uh, uh, Ghana uh, FDA. Yes. Thank you, Mimi. Um, so it wasn't a difficult process, but it is a, a very detailed process. Um, because um, before you can get to parliament, you have to go through cabinet. So to get cabinet approval, cabinet will ensure that you have worked with every single stakeholder. I mean, even the local government you have to work with because um, rules are going to change. You have to even work with your, your security agencies because now you're not working just as one country, you're working as um, a lot of countries together. Um, we would work with, as I said, we work with attorney general. So it wasn't particularly difficult. Um, the benefits are known. I mean, we, we had to um, advocate for the benefits. We, we, we used Ebola as an example. I mean, when, when um, the Ebola vaccine or the Ebola clinical trial was um, supposed to be done in Ghana. Now, if we had um, such harmonized systems, then we would not have been standing alone as a country. Um, we have already um, Aberef, which has been working um, with the different countries in the area of, of um, fast-tracking clinical trials for um, pipeline medication. So the, the, the benefits of, of Aberef was already known. We had already done a lot of advocacy as at WHO. So um, in, in showing the benefits of AMA, it was not so difficult. What we had to show was how does it, how do you as, an, as a sovereign country, how does it affect your sovereignty? Does it mean that you will not exist anymore once you have AMA or are there other things that can happen that will not happen in a centralized procedure? So we did explain, we use the European Medicines Agency to explain. We have been um, already part of the Africa Medicines Regulatory Harmonization, which is working towards the AMA. And um, we told them the benefits of that. When, fortunately, we did it before Ebola, so we didn't have to use Ebola as, um, as an example. That would have been a perfect example for us. Uh, sorry, COVID. <laughs> COVID would have been uh, an actually very, very good example for us, but we, we did it um, before COVID. So um, we used the example of um, much needed vaccines, like the malaria vaccine, where we had to use the average system, which is the same sort of regulatory harmonization with different countries, and how we managed to evaluate um, a malaria vaccine within a short time and made it available and where the three countries that introduced it are already speaking to each other. So we gave, used that as an example, saying that, well, if we had the whole of Africa speaking, then things would actually move faster for, for um, it would also be good for us to be able to build capacity in areas that we didn't have and to be able to support other countries because we are borderless, more or less. And so if there's an, a, a counterfeit medicine in one country, or there's a substandard medicine that is not picked up in one country, it can infiltrate into your own country. So we use those um, sorts of scenarios to, to convince them. It wasn't difficult, but it is um, uh, slightly bureaucratic, if I should put it that way. Mm -hmm. We don't use um, um, executive um, channel. We have to use the legislative channel. So that took a bit of um, doing. But as I said, once there's a focal person and once there's commitment, and there was commitment all around, from the Ministry of Health there was commitment, from Parliament there was commitment to move it up once they understood, and um, the political will was there, and the stakeholder involvement, we involved everyone. They looked at the laws, they looked at it and decided it was fine. Um, convincing other countries is not something that we have done. When we meet for the Africa Medicine Regulatory Harmonization, it is a topic that comes up, how many countries have signed, how many countries have ratified. And in that group, we actually do speak to um, um, the other representatives of the other countries, telling them how we did it. So that in itself may be advocacy to other countries, but that is as far as we have gone. We have not gone beyond our, our countries as individual countries to um, advocate with other countries. So I think in that AM marriage group, we have done some advocacy, but that's as far as we've gone. Thank you. Thank you, Mimi. It's, it's very interesting. I, I just remind, because I see in the chat, um, please use the chat to ask your questions. 
uh, that would be very helpful. So like that, we will address them, uh, your question to um, the group of speakers or to certain speakers, if you um, uh, tell us uh, to which um, speaker the question is addressed to. I would like to remind uh, to the different uh, viewers or participants that uh, 1515 countries are needed uh, to ratify the treaty until today 1818 have signed it and six have ratified. So you understood that Ghana uh, did it uh, but you have also Mali, Burkina Faso, Rwanda, Guinea, and the Seychelles Islands. These are the six countries that, as per today, have signed and ratified the treaty. So um, we, we, understand, um, we understand that we need a, a more, um, more political will and um, I see in the questions that um, some uh, questions are related to, uh, of course, um, the, the role of that agency. Is it going um, to be disturbing uh, for, for uh, the pharmaceutical industry, for instance? I see one of the, the questions. Um, but will it help um, in, in case of um, outbreaks or pandemic? Uh, Mimi, your, your tongue slipped when you spoke about Ebola. Um, it is true that when we have big outbreaks, uh, and, and this is maybe one of the reasons that um, Africa is doing uh, so well with COVID-19, is that Africa learned the lesson uh, with the Ebola outbreaks um, in, in uh, often very, very difficult situation and zones like um, in DRC. So uh, people are, are more maybe used to uh, listen to uh, the, the, the different guidances um, sent by uh, the, the World Health Organization. Um, so um, I'd like to, to ask, um, um, for instance, uh, Karim, uh, what he thinks about um, the situation. How do you explain um, the fact that the ratification is so slow when you know that 18 countries did sign it, only six ratified it? Is it because um, some countries uh, think that um, it will um, maybe weaken their authority in the domain? And is it a threat uh, for the pharmaceutical industry? How do you see it? I remember that Karim is uh, representing IFPMA and, uh, of course, he's head of Africa uh, Bureau of Merck. Oh, thank you, Catherine, for the, the question. <clears throat> yeah, from uh, uh, industry perspective, I think, uh, the current uh, regulatory fragmentation and uh, complexity uh, arise from the convoluted and uh, duplicative requirement imposed by each and every uh, 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 dr drug uh, uh, agency, I mean, uh, is making things extremely complex. Uh, we've seen, first of all, to answer your question, we've seen how uh, EMA was uh, uh, extremely uh, helpful in uh, accelerating the access uh, uh, to new therapy, the access of essential drugs, the access to good quality uh, medicines. So uh, uh, this, the answer is uh, simply there. I mean, uh, just uh, 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 look at what's happened with the, since the EMA started to exist, and uh, 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 then you, you will understand. But I think uh, 55 countries, it's not an easy uh, it's, a, it's quite a challenge. It's not an easy task. I mean, uh, having 55 countries ratifying a treaty is not really an, an easy task. I mean, even in the very, 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 very uh, well-organized and developed country, it's, it's still a, quite a challenge. So, uh, uh, and it is this COVID-19, I do understand that uh, 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 it takes a bit of time. But on the other side, let me try to be a bit uh, disruptive, I mean, uh, uh, as Mimi mentioned, uh, 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 the uh, African National Regulatory uh, Authorities uh, have already faced many challenges. 
such as uh, HIV, uh, Ebola, malaria still, <clears throat> and they have all tested their capabilities. However, the COVID-19, with the COVID-19, national uh, regulatory agencies can now benefit from the virtual working methods mm -hmm. that the pandemic has in a matter of uh, months made the new norm for most of us. Trends such as digitalization, with a topic that I love, because I strongly believe that we can build a strong and solid public health uh, uh, system in Africa uh, by using the digitalization. So the digitalization and the regional cooperation is creating new opportunities. You know, uh, to have all the regulatory agencies discussing and uh, uh, seated ar around the table in, uh, in, uh, in the past, it, was taking, uh, it was requiring an organization of a summit, something like that. Now you can organize a summit or a, a regional meeting in a couple of, uh, of days, I mean, huh? or in a couple of weeks. So using this uh, modern uh, and digital infrastructure, the, uh, uh, the expectation is to accelerate the implementation of an efficient, efficient regulatory policies and practices and make uh, the AMA one of the most efficient, and I believe in that, and modern regulatory system in the world. Because we are picking up the problem and the issue uh, 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 just in this uh, COVID-19 period where we are transforming the way where we are cooperating. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is also an opportunity uh, you know, to have a solid African uh, healthcare system uh, with a focus on the resilience and equity. And we as an industry, we are really, uh, we, we feel now responsible for that and we feel involved and we need uh, really uh, to see that uh, happening. So communication, digital tool, uh, uh, and whatever we can do to make this uh, AMA alive, uh, I think is part of uh, our uh, duty. Thank you. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I wanted to, to uh, could you, could you, could you please uh, tell us um, also about um, the, the quality? Um, because um, we know that Africa has a problem with fake medicine. Um, yeah. So could you please elaborate a little bit on that one? Yeah, how, Defin um, definitely. How an agency would, would um, in fact, uh, give um, a, a better control of, of the quality of, of the medicine? Look, quality is all about data and processes. So if you have an agency centralizing the data and the processes, then, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, in the continent of the fastest growing mobile ecosystem, you know, you have this, uh, in Africa, you have 70% of the continent, which is covered by 3G or 4G uh, 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 networks. Uh, additionally, this uh, high-speed broadband uh, within across the continent uh, are being installed, you know, I mean, uh, we'll soon have also the 5G in Africa. So this communication infrastructure coupled with uh, 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 some uh, 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 software and uh, innovations, including uh, home testing, uh, AI, uh, 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 chatbot, uh, call center, you know, this will allow us uh, 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 to uh, uh, will allow us to really uh, take the best profit out of the serialization of the drugs and the tracing of the drugs. If you have serialization, tracing, and the data process in one agency, I mean, it's done. You will get rid at least out of the thirty percent existing uh, falsified products. You will get, you get you will get rid of twenty percent of this. 10% would be remaining, and this is uh, uh, something different uh, to, be, to be considered. So, yeah, that's also the way uh, how we, we only, we can uh, fight the uh, counterfeited product and falsified product only with uh, serialization and digitalization, mainly. Thank you, Karim. I, I now turn to Hiti, uh, Hiti WHO. Uh, could you could you please uh, give us uh, more information about the work um, that you you uh, as WHO 
um, are doing um, with um, Africa and also um, about uh, AMA. Um, are there meetings in order um, to, to know more about um, the agency? Um, do you have uh, meetings to explain or to coordinate the future agency? And I remind um, also everyone that we need um, 15, one, five countries to ratify. And one of the questions that after I will ask to Paul is, um, how can we start if we only have 15 countries uh, that have ratified um, the um, agency? Uh, will it help to go then further? But uh, first I turn to Hiti. Hiti, could you please elaborate a little bit about uh, this, the position of WHO regarding AMA and um, also the access to medicine um, and maybe uh, will it um, facilitate um, uh, the um, harmonization um, of um, different um, maybe uh, tools that you would uh, provide uh, to, to the continent? How do you, how do you see that? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Catherine. <clears throat> and I'll be building on my, uh, my initial uh, reflection on, 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 this, on this panel discussion again. And thank you. I, I'm also seeing some interesting questions here. Uh, we, we, we are actually in touch with the African Union uh, Commission uh, to, to support them in this, in this process of ensuring that more countries do ratify the treaty. And for this, I just wanted to uh, bring to the attention of the panelists and also all the participants that uh, based on the discussion with the with the African Union uh, Commission and also to ensure that uh, <clears throat> we also target certain countries to make sure that more countries do ratify and also to ensure regional distribution, I mean geographical distribution across the continent. Our Director General has actually written to 23 ministers of health to advocate for the ratification of the, of the treaty. And, and also the, 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 our regional director in the, Africa, in the, in the African region has also, uh, has also uh, uh, reached out to uh, some key representatives in countries uh, to ensure that they follow up with the governments to accelerate the, 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 the ratification process. Some of you might have heard in 2019 in November, uh, our director general did sign also a memorandum of uh, under, of, of understanding with the with the with the AUC, uh, uh, a chairperson of the of the AUC Commission of the African Union Commission uh, to to further reaffirm and commit uh, the WHO. Uh, as, I mean uh, that we are we are very committed to supporting this process, and, and this also includes uh, uh, working together to to fundraise to support once the the agency is actually fully operational. Uh, we have also developed what you call Q&A uh, or, or question and answer advocacy paper that we have also sent to our WHO representatives in countries so that they are, they are available before the ministers to clarify any key questions in order to, to support and facilitate uh, the countries in the ratification process as, as explained by Mimi here. So, so we are reaching out uh, at, as an organization to the ministries uh, through the network of WHO country reps uh, who are actually working with the ministers of health all the time. I you, some, just wanted to also mention that in 2019, we had actually planned uh, that sometimes this year uh, with a delegation from the African Union Commission and, 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 and African Union Development Agency, AUDA, Nepal, uh, together with WHO for an undertake a study visit to, to the United States FDA uh, to, to benchmark from them and this will guide uh, uh, them in the process of, of, of establishing this agenda. So this uh, of course did not happen because of COVID, uh, but our, our role here was to facilitate this study visit and we'll also be engaging uh, in the future on this once the, the situation of pandemic uh, further becomes better. I just wanted to, to say that in all the, wherever we have opportunities, uh, through the regional economic communities where meetings are taking place, we have used those opportunities to, to, to advocate for the establishment of the uh, African Medicines Agency uh, uh, through the regional economic communities, but also, uh, as I said, uh, we, we, will, we are also engaging with other mature agencies for example, with the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety in, in, of the Republic of Korea 
to ensure that the AUC is also learning from them so that these skills, the experiences they get from there are actually transferred to the, to the establishment of the, of the African medicine agency. So uh, these are some of the efforts that we are undertaking. Uh, we, as as I, I think in, the, uh, in our preparatory course, I did mention that we are, for example, having the African Medicines Regulatory Harmonization Week uh, uh, from 9th to 10th of December. Paul can confirm that, where we are also discussing about AMA and, and encouraging countries to ensure that they, they fast track the process. We have actually confirmed during this uh, COVID pandemic uh, how important it is for countries to collaborate. Uh, a good example is our, the, the, the support that we provide through the Hello. AMRI Technical Committee uh, responsible for medical devices and IVDs, uh, mm -hmm. for which Paul from AUDA is also uh, coordinating from the AUDA side, mm -hmm. uh, exactly. as well as the African Vaccines Regulators Forum, for which Mimi uh, is actually the chair. Uh, they need to collaborate and they need to quickly take decisions under the circumstances of emergency. So we will continue to provide this support uh, until we make sure that 15 ratifications are, are attained and AMA is, 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 is fully operational and we'll be there to, 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 to provide all the linkages and all the technical support for efficient running of this agency. Over to you, uh, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you, thank you uh, Iti, but as you just mentioned, um, because of the, the, the relations that you have with the regional organizations, uh, and so I turn to Paul, um, isn't, isn't it better to first uh, harmonize uh, on a regional level before having, um, I would say, the ambition uh, to, to, have, to, to, to regulate it on a continent, uh, continental base? Uh, what what do you think, Paul? We need harmonization. That's true. That's true. That's right. Um, and and maybe could you give us also a bit more details about the content of the treaty? Because we we speak about the treaty, the treaty, but none of us have read uh, the content of it. Uh, maybe you could um, give us the big lines. What are the priorities of the the treaty, Paul? The floor is yours. Yeah, th thank you very much, um, uh, Many Catherine. questions. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, it is fine. Um, first of all, just to answer your, your question about the content of the treaty. So, uh, the, the treaty is, is uh, based on, uh, it's a treaty based. We were advised by the legal council of the African Union Commission in terms of the elements that go into the treaty, the objectives, it is a, a bit of a high level uh, treaty in terms of the objectives and the aims. Uh, and we have alluded to this in terms of uh, discussing the benefits of the Africa Medicines Agency. And of course, uh, there are other elements that are of, of, of importance that uh, uh, the treaty uh, addresses. Um, uh, talking about you know, the work of the technical committees as, uh, as Hiti has alluded to. So it, uh, it caters for, um, for, for, for responses and, and it's meant initially uh, to be lean in terms of its, um, its uh, governance structure. So we have the conference of the parties consisting of uh, ministers of health. Uh, we have the governance uh, board consisting of representatives from the regional economic communities, uh, regional health uh, organizations, uh, ethics committees, and also uh, the Commissioner for Social Services. So this is, um, this is, uh, this is the governance of the, of the treaty. And uh, it is all available for you to download, but, but it, it does um, uh, have articles to do with the administration and institutional framework, uh, issues around the, the key objectives and the key functions. And this is what we have been discussing uh, all along this morning. This is areas around uh, the regulatory functions that the African Medicines Agency will initially focus on. That is um, marketing authorization, uh, GMP inspections, 
uh, consolidating a database for the uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients, uh, issues around safety monitoring, um, uh, uh, and also uh, issues around um, evaluation of products that are not normally evaluated at the country level or that there are no capacities at the country level. So we're going to be pulling resources uh, from the countries, expertise from the countries, uh, so that they are uh, at that level, at the continental level, so that they can issue uh, scientific uh, opinions. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this is a high level treaty, as I said, um, and of course, uh, I didn't talk about uh, the oversight of clinical trials, which Avarev has uh, been uh, conducting, and also areas of uh, quality control. So uh, just to give you some more information about uh, the way the AMRA governance structure is, is that um, uh, at the technical level, we have what we call technical committees. So we, uh, we aspire that these technical committees that are focusing in different areas, and uh, ET has mentioned one of the areas that is medical devices and diagnostics. It's called the African Medical uh, Devices Forum will be one of the technical committees for the Africa Medicines Agency, as well as AVAREF, uh, Africa Medicines Quality Forum, um, uh, and, 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 and other uh, technical uh, committees, including even Africa Blood Regulators Forum, because we also have a, another forum that is uh, looking at uh, quality and safety of uh, blood and blood products. So this is... Um, this is the highlight of the treaty, and uh, and once it is it comes into operations, uh, after 15 member states ratify, then it will take a life of its own as an agency of the African Union. So there is still a process, of course, for uh, you know uh, uh, selecting the host host country. Mm -hmm. There is a, a general criteria. Uh, that has been put forward by the uh, heads of state and endorsed in uh, 2005 on criteria for selection of um, AU, uh, AU organs. And we are trying to fill into that criteria so that we, we have, uh, we, when that time arrives, we, we, we are clear how we want the agency to be hosted. So uh, this is in a nutshell what is... Um, what is in the uh, in in the treaty, and the treaty is available uh, at our website or yes. the AU website as well. I I, I oh, did what? I did share um, the the link uh, with um, in the chat box, so uh, the people that are interested in reading the treaty can just click on the link and they will find it on the African Union um, platform. Um, Mimi. Um, you you are the only woman. Yes, uh, sorry, Paul. So you 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 told you asked me about the um, how we want to take forward this uh, this uh, the, the, the 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 treaty uh, in terms of signing. I think it has addressed most of what I wanted to say. Tomorrow uh, and uh, uh, tomorrow and uh, Thursday we will have the MRH week. Tomorrow uh, we'll just have presentations. And then on, uh, on Thursday, we'll have the steering committee for the AMRH. And I know a lot of participants here have already been invited. Uh, I, I should also mention that uh, the, um, when I attended last Friday, uh, the SADC Regulators Forum, they informed me that uh, they still need some uh, support uh, to, 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 for political engagement for the ratification of the AMA Treaty. So, we have uh, consultancies that have been working with the African Union Commission to uh, develop uh, briefing notes, uh, high-level briefing notes, mainly for ministers and permanent secretaries and uh, high-level officials. And uh, we have also developed the other IEC materials, uh, guidance notes. And we are using these uh, platforms like uh, regional ministers' meetings uh, to continue uh, you know, advocating for the uh, signing and ratification of the AMA Treaty by countries. So this is what, what I wanted to say, but I think ET has covered most of uh, what I also wanted to speak to. Thank you. Over Thank to you. you. Um, um, Mimi, 
um, maybe maybe you could um, add a bit on that uh, also ab about um, what is now your country Ghana doing um, or expecting I waiting okay so currently fortunately because we already have Averf looking at the clinical trials um, we are and that is going to be one of the the, the working groups or the arms of um, um, the AMA. And we also have the um, medical devices forum. Um, and we also have the, I think the lab laboratory, quality control laboratories forum. So we have been taking part in these individual forums outside the AMA, but they're all working to be part of AMA. So the, we are not actually at a standstill. We're actually working. Um, we will get there. So all these groups are there and they are working. So we can see the actual benefits of AMA even before we go into full operation. And um, at the end of the day, I mean, the way we look at it here is that the AMA is designed to build on what we're already doing. It is designed to strengthen capacity because, for example, Ghana has been assessed as a maturity level three by WHO. The other countries, it's the second country, Tanzania was the first. The other countries that are looking to get there. Um, if we're working in this harmonized system, would it be easier to vote for us to support other countries? Yes, maybe. Um, looking at even um, COVID, um, we have a vaccine that we are going to soon introduce that none of us know anything about. And um, if we were working within a, a harmonized system within the AMA, because for example, if you look at the malaria vaccine, it was not within ECOWAS. It was between Ghana, uh, Kenya and Malawi. So that crossed our regional economic blocks. So if we're working within the uh, AMA, would we have had the opportunity to have been part of a trial? Would it have been easier for industry to come in and say, I want to do a clinical trial. I know you have harmonized systems. I want to register a product. I know you have harmonized systems. Would we have known? Would you have had uh, more opportunities for early entry into Africa? I'm not sure, but I think so. Because I mean, as the um, um, industry said, it is easier to come into um, a, a group of countries where you have harmonized legislation, harmonized guidelines, and harmonized processes than to go to each and every individual country. So, I mean, looking at COVID, in a way, we feel like we've lost out because we have no idea what is going on in the vaccine market. We will get a product that we more or less do not know about, but we still have to evaluate. In, 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 um, currently, I'm sure we may be able to use the, we are looking at using the AVRF um, system to do that evaluation. But if we had AMA set up, we would have been able to use the, um, registration working group to be able to do this. So um, we have started, we think we will do much more when we have AMA set up. We hope that all the other working groups will, will I mean, all the ratification will happen. I, I mean, it is bureaucratic, but it is not difficult. And we're hoping that all that will happen so that we have um, harmonization, which makes everything easier. It makes access easier. Um, we would then have a common database base, for example, if somebody found a counterfeit medicine in Malawi, there would be a common database to put this in and then we in Ghana would be able to access it before, say, it got here. Um, we'd have a common database on safety. I think NEPAD, um, um, the Africa Union has even already started that, where we are looking at having the um, Africa Union smart safety surveillance, where we would all put our safety data in. So when the COVID vaccine arrives, for example, we have a repository of safety data for the continent. So we are not at a standstill waiting for ratification. We are kind of working towards it and waiting for the, for the, for the um, um, what would I call it, the documents and the documentary, you know, um, things to happen. But in the meantime, we are still moving and rolling as we wait to get there. So it is going to be good for all of us. We just hope that it goes quickly enough uh, for us to be able to implement it properly. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mimi. And uh, now um, I'll ask a, a last question to, to all the panelists before I, I will hand over uh, for um, the conclusion, uh, concluding uh, remarks uh, to Kawal Dip. Um, I would like to ask each of you um, what you think about the advocacy, because it is something very important. And do you think that um, there are, there is enough publicity, I would say, information regarding um, uh, AMA, uh, because it is also needed not only to convince 
uh, the, um, the politicians, um, the political world, but also um, the public, um, the, the average people. Um, so um, I know being myself from the press that uh, we don't hear a lot about that. International press is not talking about that. Maybe um, the, the fact that we have um, um, IFC, uh, FTA, um, that it will help and also maybe uh, I, I hope um, the, the soon election of a head of WTO um, naming Mrs. Ngozi uh, at the head of WTO, she, she clearly said that she will help access to, to medicines. So maybe um, that will be also a, a little help uh, to, to, um, to advocate more about AMA. Um, I, I will start um, with Paul. Paul, could you please, um, your last words about um, the future? Uh, will it be in the near future? Uh, what can we do about uh, advocacy? Yeah, th thank you very much. I think um, it should be a concerted effort for all of us, uh, all those who are interested, uh, all the stakeholders, to really advocate for the um, signing and ratification of the uh, AMA treaty. Uh, one is we should, uh, as much as we have already been trying to do that, we should further simplify the messages that uh, go out there because um, once you start uh, discussing technical issues, especially mm -hmm. at the political level, even mm -hmm. uh, those you are engaging with might lose interest. So we should work with the communication experts and those who are in advocacy to simplify the messages that we are passing out there the communication should be multi-pronged, should be able to engage with the media, with the, you know, the civil society, patient organizations, uh, government, and, and, and all those stakeholders that are involved. Uh, so that, uh, so it is not a one, there is no silver bullet I can see for this, uh, this, this work. I think it, it has to be, uh, you know, uh, consultative and it has to be um, uh, the efforts uh, from 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 different angles have to be engaged. So Thank I you. think that is my last word for this. Thank uh, you so much, uh, Paul, uh, for for your participation and um, uh, sharing uh, these thoughts. I I now turn to Elos, but I don't see Elos. Is Elos still connected? Uh, maybe yep. he got uh, Elos. Are you still yep. with us? I'm available. Okay, so what is um, your, your thoughts about that, about the future, about advocacy? Um, could patients advocate more about it? Yes, actually what we need is uh, a more sustained uh, engagement and provision of uh, information to patient groups. So if there is simplified information provided to all patient groups, who take part in, in, in advocating with the, the relevant authorities. Because uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, AMA has got a, it's, it's a bullet for us patients. Mm -hmm. And then the other issue maybe is the, in the governance structures of AMA. It, they have to be patient centric. So mm -hmm. whatever is being done, us as patients, we must be involved. We must be given room and a voice in the AMA governance structures. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elos. I now turn to Iti. Iti, I know WHO, you're already doing a great job. Um, what is um, next? Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you, Catherine. I, I, I enjoyed this conversation. I just wanted to, to maybe as a my last message to say that we as WHO, we and our director general has actually committed this to the African Union Commission that we will explore and use each and every opportunity event and a meeting uh, or in a forum to continue to advocate for the establishment of African Medicines Agency because we believe that this is the only way to accelerate and to increase efficiency in, in regulatory processes to ensure access to quality assured and safe medical products. Uh, on the African continent. So uh, whatever opportunity that uh, presents before us, we will, we will ensure that 
right away from the level of the senior leadership by the DG uh, to all the, 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 the other levels. We will continue to, to ensure that we are actually, uh, we are actually uh, continually uh, advocating for the establishment of the African Medicines Agency, but also following through our network of WHO regional, uh, regional and, and the, the, the WHO country offices uh, in the African continent. Uh, through our WHO representatives in countries who are close to the ministries to, uh, to ensure that the, the Q&A advocacy tool that is with them is effectively used to ensure that the more countries ratify. But not only more countries, we are also ensuring that there is geographical representation in terms of countries that, that are actually ratifying because this is very important for the buy-in and also for the, for, the, for the effectiveness of the agency that will be supporting all the countries. Lastly, I think we believe that the COVID-19 uh, is also a, a platform and it, it has actually demonstrated that it is important uh, for, for this agency to, to be in place. Now we are discussing about COVID vaccines and you see the role played by the centralized agencies uh, like European Medicine Agency in Europe or uh, the work that is done by, by USFDA and supporting other countries. So uh, we are involved in several discussions with other regulators and we are seeing that uh, having a centralized agency, for example, on the African continent, uh, could actually facilitate and fast track uh, approval of products, and other countries could, could benefit from that. So, so we see that COVID-19 is also another platform that we should keep using and to ensure that we get more notifications and we get AMA operational. We are optimistic that AMA will be operational soon and we'll continue to provide our technical support to this agency. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, um, and then I turn to Karim, uh, IFPMA, uh, Merck. Uh, okay, you, you guys are organizing this event today, so it is a way to advocate um, for, for this treaty. So next step, what's next? I, I think the, to summarize a bit uh, the, the situation, I mean, uh, Catherine, with appropriate training, capacity building, manufacturing, regulatory agility, robust inspection programs and effective safety surveillance through the establishment of the AMA, we as an industry can deliver timely access of medicinal products for patients. Thank you, Karim. And now uh, I will turn uh, to Kawal Deb and to Greg Perry uh, for the concluding remarks. Uh, I would like uh, to thank and to underline the fact that uh, the Assistant Director General Greg Perry is with us since the beginning. Greg, thank you so much uh, for, for being with us. And um, I now turn um, uh, and hand over uh, to Kawaldip for thank the you. concluding remarks with Greg. Thank you, Kawaldip. Uh, thank you very much, Catherine. I think this is a brilliantly moderated session. Catherine, we really owe you one. When we're in Geneva, we will take you to that cafe for tea and coffee. Also, I must thank all the participants. Uh, we had over 150 participants uh, who joined us from Africa. Passionate remarks in the various uh, things they have said and we will follow those remarks up uh, eventually. I will be, my patients are also sitting on this uh, well, part of the audience. We will be putting in our patient perspective separately to you guys. We'll be sending that as a document to everybody to realize. But to the take home messages we have got uh, from this session was one, that uh, the African Medicine Agency will restore trust in healthcare once more. I think we have all taken a battery. Uh, it will also restore pride. It will be an African-owned institution that will restore pride in Africa as a whole. It's almost uh, meeting Kwame Nkrumah's dream of having a pan-African oversight in uh, regulatory matters such as health. Also, uh, what is said that uh, the speed at which AMA can be ratified is uh, needs to be looked at. We knew the WHO Framework Convention Tobacco Control Treaty was ratified under one year, nine months. This is 194. This is a big elephant, you know, <laughs> 194 members to be said. Now we have a small little antelope here of a treaty. I think we can manage much better than that. Please do ensure. 
We have said that we need citizen journalists and patient uh, advocacy to ensure and enlighten, debrief parliamentarians, because health is a political choice. And when you do get these letters dropping on your um, inbox that say that, please ratify, they will. Uh, we know medicines regulatory affairs is one big elephant in Africa. Let's put it this way. You need a lot of people to look at it. You can't just address it. So therefore, no one country is able to evaluate, check, uh, clarify all the products that are going to be coming in post-COVID. We also know one, not one country is able to monitor all the supply chain. So therefore, AMA is that. AMA will be able to distribute all these functionalities to various countries to take part, just as EMA has done. We know there is no threat of AMA to National Medicines Regulatory Agency. This is a complementary and uh, more, more like an alliance of working things. It will really help us become efficient and effective in this. One of the biggest things that we see from AMA, I think, uh, um, again, uh, was from Ghana, came up, that will boost local African research and development we will be control of our own clinical trials. I can see University of Makerere, Nairobi, Ghana, universities of Nigeria, all listening in, they want this, this is for them. The trials will be registered locally under local oversight. It will give enormous boost to our young Africans who are dying to help us through the next phases. Very important for us. And most important, it will boost local manufacture and local uh, control over economy. And as you know, one of the primary reasons for setting up European Medicines Agency from the European Union was it was seen more as an economic giant. It will preserve the intellectual property rights. It will preserve the know-how. It will create that cluster. I mean, we have got... Uh, uh, Professor Michael Potter, who talks about clusters of speciality, you know, that's how these guys went out. A MIT and Boston, that cluster there, and then San Francisco didn't happen overnight. It needed that enabling environment, and AMA will give that. AMA will create that enabling environment where African clusters of excellence can work together, and the spin offs are the moon. Let's put it this way. And lastly, I think uh, we have said that uh, Alos put it quite finely. We do need patients at the center of this decision-making. They need to be co-creators. We are not competing as a role model. We are not a threat. Uh, a request from the patients is not a petition. It's not a judicial review. It's about, let's look at this. It will make our systems more efficient and effective and reachable as well. I think the ultimate, as we call it, of what you write, patients are able to distribute that quickly to their social media. And Lastly, I need to thank everybody again. We'll follow up this. We've got lots of ideas about briefings on um, how to prepare briefings for your things. Uh, we will be setting up an alliance, I've said, uh, for just like the Femur Convention Tobacco Alliance. Uh, we would like to set up now an alliance for EMA, a small, unique alliance. And we need to push that now. And that alliance will do the job. And let's make sure. And that, that's only half the job, really. I think setting up, the, getting the treaty ratified is just a part, starting journey. We need to make sure this organization functions properly, functions sustainably, and brings us the benefits we know. Thank you very much, and I'll now pass on to Greg. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you, Kawaldeep. Thank you for these uh, wonderful words uh, to the speakers, uh, and also to, to wrap up, um, and as you just mentioned, uh, ratifying the treaty is only a beginning. And now I turn to the lady, the lady of the group, Mimi Darko from Ghana. Uh, yes, Mimi, I mean, I, I kept, I wouldn't say the best for the end, uh, but you're the only a woman among the speakers. So um, if you could just say a few words before giving the floor for the last words to the Assistant Director General Greg Perry of um, IFPMA. So please, Mimi. Uh, thank you very much. Maybe next time we, we, we invite another woman, so the spotlight is not on me. But generally, <laughs> um, coming, coming from um, where we started from in, 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 in Ghana and um, looking at where we can go in Africa. And, and uh, Kawadeb mentioned about local manufacture. 
because I'd mentioned earlier as well about um, in boosting research and um, looking at what happened with COVID. I mean, we, we realized we could not get anything and we actually managed to boost ourselves to make our own PPEs. Mm -hmm. um, we have not taken part much in, in research of, of vaccines, but um, even if the vaccines are available to us, how much will we have? So if we had um, um, this African Medicines Agency and we're all working together, would it boost local manufacture? Would there be technology transfer? Because I know there are countries that are already manufacturing vaccines. How can that technology be transferred to some of the countries that are not to ensure that we have um, good, a, a good research base and we also have a good manufacturing base because that is the only way that Africa can be sustainable in anything that they do. That is the only way we can fight our pandemics. Um, we will have all the, um, all the um, regulatory knowledge that if we don't have the research base and we don't have the manufacturing base, we will still be at, at a standstill. So I think all in all, um, we have started working towards AMA, as I said, through the different working groups like AVREF and the Blood Regulators Forum. And um, with the support of NEPAD, AUDA NEPAD, and WHO, and the industry, you talked about advocacy. And I think maybe it's about time industry also supported. And there was a question in there that said, how can industry support? And um, I think AMA will also be a benefit for industry, as Karim said. And maybe industry can also help to do some advocacy with the Africa continental free trade area coming up. How will a, a, a harmonized um, system or a harmonized agency like AMA help to support that? So we would need the advocacy from everywhere to ensure that as Africa, we can um, stand, we can sustain, be sustainable. Um, the, the, the will is there, the political will is there. The, the, the um, uh, resources are there. They may not be in one country as we've always said. So how do we pull these resources together for the benefit of Africa as a whole. So AMA could do this if we worked quickly enough, if we worked closely enough, if we collaborated and gave Africa what it needs best. That is needed medicines, right quality, right time, and, um, and the good enough safety for, for all of us. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mimi. I now give the floor uh, to the Assistant Director General of IFPMA, Mr. Greg Perry. Greg, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I have to be very brief. I'd just like to thank all the panelists for their excellent introduction of this topic. And I say introduction because I think as, as Kwali said, this is a beginning of a journey. Uh, we will be, uh, we are fully committed. We will be on that journey with all the stakeholders towards the establishment of the AMA and what goes on beyond that in relation to all the other issues that have been said. We fully endorse all the statements which were just made previously before by, by, the, by the speakers. So we are committed uh, to the AMA. We are committed uh, to uh, uh, quick, timely access of uh, safe, uh, quality and, effect and effective medicines uh, on the continent. Um, just to say, I'd like to thank also IAPO and Kowaldeep in, in particular for partnering. Uh, with this and uh, we have spoken together and our intention is to continue these series of um, discussions on the AMA and wherever that leads us to. So once again, thank you to everybody and thank you for all the participants for joining us today. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.